this last year and a half, we got to the point where just getting up from you know the kitchen to the living room was a major chore. Because none of the meds and anything were working. She said, if you go on a ventilator, she says, you won't come off the ventilator. So she said, we'll be hoping that you can get a transmit because there's not another option. A transplant is just one of those amazing procedures that really gives people not just a second chance on life, but hope again. We take a lot of pride in our lung transplant program. The patients typically have advanced lung disease. They're at imminent risk of death, and it truly is the gift of life. Yes, we're going to take good care of you, okay? We have patients from all over the United States on our lung transplant waiting list. And the reason they come here is because of what we've done and what we're capable of doing. Last year, about four to 500 patients in the United States died waiting for a lung transplant, even though about 2,500 lung transplants were done. About 15% of the patients that we transplant have been declined at other lung transplant programs. What makes us unique and different is our willingness to take risk and to offer this therapy to very complex patients. We're able to do that because of our breadth of surgical experience as well as our medical experience on the pulmonary medicine side. It requires a very in-depth evaluation process up front. The transplant pulmonologists, the surgeons, the physical therapists, the social workers, the respiratory therapists, everyone who's involved in the team hear about the case altogether and that's where we make the decision if we think that it's appropriate to list them and when. Lung transplants since 2005 have been allocated not based upon length of time on the list but on how sick a patient is and we definitely have more than our share of those patients who are at that highest acuity and we still are able to evaluate them, make sure it's still safe in order to give them their transplant. The transplant itself is very involved. The average stay in the hospital is about 12 to 14 days and then afterwards the care is pretty intense. Getting a lung transplant is sort of like exchanging one set of problems for a different set of problems because of the complications of the medications, the risk of rejection, and in some ways it does become a chronic disease. One with a better quality of life and hopefully a longer life as well. But all of that requires management and it requires management long term. We're constantly talking to patients and their families to identify support people because it's so complex. So they have to have a team of people in place to be able to help them get through it long term. Every Monday we have our lung transplant selection committee and Dr. McCurry brings up the fact that every day there are lungs out there that don't get used. He's very aggressive about leading our program to go after every lung that we can because one extra lung is one extra chance of life. A lot of what we've been trying to do here at the clinic to push the field forward, to develop ways of trying to make those lungs that we don't utilize right now, to try to make them better. Ex vivo lung perfusion, it's a way we have of taking lungs, putting them on a machine and doing things to assess them or to make them better and then to transplant those organs into recipients. So using that technology over the next five to ten years, we can double uh, the number of lung transplants that are done in the United States. I tell patients and especially their families that there can be highs and lows, there can be good miles and harder miles. The important thing is they're still in the race. They know that there can be some complications along the road, but once they're on the lung transplant list, they're like, I'm waiting for my lungs. I'm waiting for my chance to live again. Every one of us who helps to take care of them, we take that to heart. Offering transplantation to the patients that we think it's appropriate for, and sometimes trying to push those boundaries with the goal of putting that individual patient first and offering them a second chance at life. Seeing my life come to an end and then realizing that there was hope when we got here, just very blessed, just very great, grateful for that. And how much I appreciate life. I finally get to go home with a sense of things will be better instead of things will be worse. Everyday life is just so much more valuable at this point.